Hello, welcome back to the Yanzhou campaign. Last time we were clearing up some mess from the Sao clan, we took out a field army and took one of their settlements. We had a decisive final battle with the Liu clan that didn't really go to plan, thanks to the AI having its own ideas, but we did go on to take their last settlement, so now our big enemy is wiped out. We begin the next turn with an adoption candidate called Liu Bei, so I decided to bring him in as a memorial to Liu Bei's faction. Although he's not actually in the family tree like most of our family at this point, I think having a non-character be the faction leader is ruining everything in that regard. Would be really good if Liu Bu hadn't died. Anyway, we're going to continue our advance on Qingzhou. Hao Meng is continuing the standoff in the east, but now we've got a new siege in the west to get started. I've got an army coming up from our capital, and really I'm just going to leave them sieging here because the army inside the city is decent. It probably would be possible to grind our way through it, but not easily. So I'm just going to wait. We've got reinforcements on the way since the Liu front is cleared up. There's no point rushing into those fights right now. Against the Sao clan, we're going to have an easier time. They've got one walled city left here for us to take in the corner of their empire, and I'm deploying Song Shan to go and take that out. My main force, though, under Zhang Liao, is going to wander off and fight near Sichui Pass. That's where we need to actually break through. I say under Zhang Liao. For some reason, I have Zhang Liao in this city at the moment. I need to get him out, distract the people by putting on loads of games so they don't rebel. And with that, Cheng Liao can come and join the army. We just pushed some rebels out of the way. Now there are some Sao clan forces standing right outside Sichui Pass, the perfect situation for a siege drawout, although we can't do it until next turn. During the end turn sequence, Qing Zhou come and ask for peace. I say I'll do it if they give me one of their territories and they were outraged by that, so the war will continue. As I said, I think the longer this goes on, the more in our advantage it will be as more of our armies arrive. Now, in the next turn, the Siege Drought is available. We've got Cao Ang here, the current faction leader of the Cao clan, coming out leading the army from Sichui Pass. So that's nice, an opportunity to take him down. Although the enemy army very quickly ran to the back of the map where they've got this really good terrain, there's a steep mountain, they've got rocks defending their rear, the perfect place to put their army, so I'm going to have to do an annoying uphill advance. Although first, they sent some horse archers to come and skirmish with us. I thought, well fine, they're just being stupid here. I've got this massive line of archers and crossbowmen. We can easily win a skirmish, but they're actually slightly above us, giving them some extra range. And our crossbowmen in the front don't have the range to fire back at first. A few of them claim to have it, but they're taking their time. So we're actually taking losses in this skirmish. <laughs> it's not actually going that well. A couple of regular cav units start charging down. So that forces me to push the melee infantry to the front in case we get charged, and with that, the enemy then withdraw and call off the skirmish, returning back to the hill. Overall, that's some pretty good play from the AI. <laughs> Don't know if it was a mistake, but that was how they should have conducted that skirmish. I think they did more damage to us than we did to them. Now, to actually go up the hill, I split my army into two parts. So now we'll cut to ages later. I've got the main army pretty much back where it was before, but we've now got this flanking group, which is all of the crossbowmen, some cav, and one unit of spears, who are going to climb up the hill a bit further on and try to get onto the flank of the enemy army so they can attack not uphill. The rest of the army needs to still be in front of them so they'll face me and make a flank attack possible. It seemed to be working, but of course the downside to this is that a big line of crossbowmen can easily be countered by cav, the enemy charge some cav out, and while I have my own cav and some spears to counter, they're way too slow to actually react to this, so we are going to take a nice charge on those crossbows and lose a whole load of men. But we've got so many crossbows, I wanted to just ignore it and get everyone firing forwards. Their heavy cav then start coming at us, but I can put some heavy spears in front of the crossbows and stop them, so that's okay. The main fight is about to start. The enemy are going to get a nice downhill charge against us, giving them the advantage in the melee, but I think we have more men than them locally. Our archers aren't going to be terribly helpful there, so we need to get some cab around behind the enemy army to take out all of their archers. Things are going okay there on the left, the heavy spears are doing damage to Sao Ang, and our own cav are just about countering the enemy cav. We can pile in an additional unit of cav to turn that fight in our favour. As for Cao Ang, I'm going to send Zhang Liao to go and finish him off. He can use his special ability to make his guard super powerful and just go and hack through that guy. 
He eventually dies, or quite quickly dies I should say, and that's going to help turn the fight in our favour. The main part of the fight wasn't going especially well, but now things are going to start routing. Our cav behind the enemy lines are just taking out the enemy archers and they're going to rout as well. This is where the battle will turn. We soon also kill the leader of their first army, the one that was outside the gate. That should finish everything off, and while everything here is pretty much just routing, the battle continued because they had some horse archers who were fighting on in the corner somewhere right up against the line, there they are, and they refused to go. So I had some time to go and slaughter everything else, but I wasn't actually able to get a complete victory here. Some of the enemy's cav survived in the group from Sishui Gate, so it's not going to be a siege drawout, but an okay victory. Wasn't the best result, but then we did have an annoying uphill battle to contend with. At least we killed the enemy faction leader again. That's going to further demoralize them. No idea who the faction leader is now, but they must be getting down to some really minor sows at, at this point. Since we didn't do the siege draw out, we'll have to set up this siege at Sishui, but there's pretty much nothing in there, so that's a guaranteed win. The army that was facing off against the Liu clan under Gao Shen has now arrived in the north with a load of officers and decent troops to support Hao Meng in his little standoff on the bridge. That standoff still isn't going anywhere, the enemy refused to attack, and it's too difficult for me to attack, so we're really just going to keep standing there for a while. I wondered if I was going to run out of supplies standing here, but looks like things are okay for now, he's somehow foraging around and getting away with it. Here's the fight we would face if I actually wanted to go for an attack. I can't be reinforced because there's no space and the enemy have loads of reinforcements. It's even worse than it looked because they had some hidden men in the forest south of the city. Not a completely unwinnable battle, it may be possible to force our way through there, or at least do some damage and then use the second army to finish the enemy off. But I guess I'm just not really rushed here, <laughs> just gonna stand there and wait for something better to happen. Zhang Liao now needs to go in and attack Sishui. I decided to fight it manually because I thought there might be an interesting map, like a big gate in some way, but there wasn't, so I cancelled that idea, went back to an earlier save and auto resolved it. There we go, faster than actually fighting it myself. The gate type settlements and the pass type settlements are kind of like castles in the base game, in that they can't do everything, they can't do the same things that a city can, and just generally they're worse, <laughs> they don't have any special advantage other than their tactical positioning, you can force sieges at them. We'll just be leaving this place be because we want to move as much of the army as we can on towards Luoyang to the west, which is the former capital of the whole empire, I think the capital at Chang'an right now. Luoyang was burned down in recent history but it's still there in the game so it's something for us to go after, a nice symbolic victory. Over at the standoff I had an idea. I thought if I put Gao Shun in charge of the first army, we may be able to do a night attack since he's a high level commander, and that might get rid of all the enemy reinforcements. I don't try it right away here, but when I eventually do it, I discovered that most of these reinforcements were able to participate in a night attack, and it was still pretty much as hard as it was going to be before, so I never bothered with anything there. What I am going to do is have the second army, now under New Jin, go to the northeast and go after the other Qingzhou territory that I was ignoring. He's even adopted into the family after an easy auto resolve <laughs> against some random troops. Surprisingly easy to get adopted into this family, but they never put you on the official tree for some reason. Not quite sure what's going on there. I've built up a new half stack army to go and support our siege at the west end of the Qingzhou territory, and those guys are going to be important in a minute, which is why I mentioned that. Zhang Liao is now ready to go and march on Luoyang. Don't have any scouting information, but I just presumed that it would be fine to just run at it. And indeed, there's not all that much on the inside. So we should be guaranteed to take this very historic and very uh, psychologically important part of the empire. The Sao clan come in with this outrageous peace deal. We've got their last two places under siege and they're still asking me to pay them to not kill them. Not sure what's going on, but we reject that deal and continue both of the sieges. Now here's some bad news. We've got a traitor. It's that half stack that I just moved towards Lin Zi. They are now our enemies. This is happening all over the place, I haven't really mentioned it that much, but lots of one or two unit armies just rebel the moment I move them anywhere. I think armies rebel when your faction leader has low authority, but our faction leader is like this three year old kid, so we can't see his stats and presumably he is considered to have low authority. 
Overall, I don't know how we can actually counter this problem right now. I don't know who we need to train up or what buttons we need to press to solve this, and it may indeed be impossible if we can't somehow kill off this kid faction leader and force Zhang Liao to be the faction leader somehow. So, rebellions all over the place. It essentially just means I have to have generals leading even the smallest army, otherwise they might just turn against us. The siege up there in the top right goes ahead without much fuss, there's not much in there so we'll take it eventually. And here's me getting a pointless military access deal with Huai Nan, Yuan Shu's faction. I'm doing this just to make them like me, you can see here we've got very good relations with them now and Nanyang as well off to the west. Just securing our southern border, Huainan are a very powerful faction with lots of territory, so if they like us, we're going to be much safer. I'm also scouting to the south, and we can spot there our first glimpse of Sun Clan armies. The Sun Clan is at war with us, <laughs> they might show up at some point, we're really just presuming they won't. Zheng Liao is ready to start the attack on Luoyang right here. Not that much on the inside, and possibly an auto resolve. But in this case, I did want to fight it. You can see that Xiao Yuan has become the leader of the Sao clan, so they've managed to pass rulership out of their actual dynasty. Now we just need to find a way to do it. This, I think, is our first battle attacking an actual city with the big walls and a gigantic map. The size of the map's going to be to our advantage because the enemy army is too small to defend the walls. That allows us to get some men into the city for free, and where they do rush ahead of our siege towers to defend, I can just stand here and not deploy the siege tower, <laughs> basically taking the enemy out of the fight by forcing them to just watch me doing nothing. I open the eastern gate unopposed, some troops come over to investigate my attack, and now I deploy all of my archers to just shoot at them and try to do some damage, while swords who deployed further along the wall also attempt to fight over the top of the gatehouse against some more archers I believe. I'm sending some spears off to the side of the gate to block the access of their heavy cav to the main road towards the town centre, which we'll want to use for our own cav. I also attacked in the south, but here we've got a bit of a standoff. They've got light cav defending the inside of the gate, and my main attacking unit here is a squad of swords, who we've seen before can't beat light cav in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I thought maybe my crossbows would shoot through the gatehouse and take out those cav, but it just doesn't work like that. So in the end, I have to just pile in with the light cav I had supporting and the swords and beat the enemy via attrition. There go my cav, we're just going to charge towards the town centre. There were some horse archers or something blocking the way, but we can just hack our way through. The siege tower that was just doing nothing has now been deployed because a gap has opened up, so they'll go help take the walls. My spearmen are having a pretty difficult time fighting with the enemy's heavy cav. They didn't do very well. I guess because the heavy cav are just so good that even sending the halberds in isn't enough to take them down, and those cav eventually started going back towards the victory point as it looked like I was about to take it. There are my men coming in from the south, but they're not in position to stop the enemy getting here. The troops I have here are light cavalry, that's not what we need to hold off a heavy cav assault, so we need to try and come up with something. My first order is to get all of my ranged units and tell them to just somehow make it towards the centre and start firing at those heavy cav, but what we really need to do is send in our own heavy cav to take them out. That's where Zhang Liao is going to come in. Those men who were defending the walls have been taken out by the melee units we've got up there. We need to get them down because we do lack melee units in general in this army, so we could actually use them for the attack on the victory point. But it's going to take them so long to get here that we're not going to wait for that. I am though going to do a somewhat tactical move that normally I wouldn't bother with in this series. I'm going to stop engaging the enemy and pull everything away from the victory point to try and use my vast number of ranged units to kill the enemy's heavy cav. This depends on whether the enemy will just stand there and allow me to do it. And at first, they did. They just sit on the victory point after I left, so I set up my crossbows to begin firing in. This volley here is kind of messed up, because my own men are running through my guys while they're trying to fire, so they all just shoot straight up. This isn't especially effective, but against a cavalry unit it's okay, because there's still a pretty big cross section from above, so it's not all that much worse, actually, than just shooting at them normally, come to think of it. One of their generals came over to the corner, I think that was Shahou Yuan, and tried to fight with some swords and Wei Xu and got himself killed, and that was really our cue to just finish this off. Wei Xu and Zhang Liao can take all of the heavy cav for a little fight in the center of the victory point. Gonna have to be a fight down to the last man, but that's fine, we've got a lot more mans than they do. There's the win. We did take a few losses, in comparison to what the enemy lost as well, but then again it was a city assault, so some losses should be expected. 
in we go. So the historic capital of the Han Empire is now ours. The Emperor isn't here, he's over at Chang'an at this point in the timeline, and you can go and conquer it to try and get the Emperor, as I think I mentioned right at the start. And I might still do that if the opportunity arises. For now, I'm just going to build up Luoyang and have this be the edge of our empire. Looks like it's pretty poorly built up at the moment, some nice bad development from the Sour Clan, so we'll sort them out. Now those rebellious reinforcements actually come and try to break the siege we had going here. This is outrageous behaviour, but at least it gives us a relatively easy defensive battle to fight, although taking losses here is not appreciated because I was already worried about the potential losses we're going to take fighting Qing Zhou, which is why I had those reinforcements on the way in the first place. We hit the enemy with a big volley of nothing from our archers, and as expected it has minimal effect. But as the enemy get closer, our men are going to go for the arrows instead. More likely to be effective, they are leading with those heavy units, which I guess are somewhat resistant to arrow fire, I don't know the details. But we have so many archers in comparison to them, that we can do some serious damage as they advance, especially because it's crossbowmen, so they have to advance extra far and uphill, which makes it even worse. However, there isn't really much of a skirmish phase, they're just going to do the usual run right at us thing. I'm going to do the usual skirmish attempt, and we just about get it here, I think. We probably lost a couple of archers to the cavalry charge there, but we did get the spearmen forwards fast enough, I think, to miss most of the damage. And those cav are now going to be in huge trouble. We have some pretty good spearmen there. The cav rout, and then as they rout, their commander dies, so we've captured the enemy commander. That's going to make the rest of the battle quite easy. Plus, we have reinforcements arriving. Our AI-controlled reinforcements under that new guy, Liu Bei, arrive to storm on the right. And on the left, we've just won. In general, the enemy infantry didn't stick around for long. Our infantry is better, and the enemy's morale was low. Pretty much at this point, it's just archers running away that we've got to face. So we charge forwards and turn those skirmishes into routes. Looked like we'd killed enough already as the full route started. So there we go, we've dealt with the rebel army. I noticed that Huai Nan have absolutely loads of stacks just hanging around right here. Pretty suspicious, but we are actually allied to them, so it's not so bad for now. It just reminded me that last time I played this mod, Huai Nan also had absolutely loads of stacks. I don't know if they have really rich cities or something, or they're just using hacks, but they're a particularly powerful faction. The Sao clan somehow put together an army to potentially relieve the siege at Wu Yin, but it was basically a few men and tons of mercenaries. Nothing special, I quickly just take them out with an auto resolve. Niu Jin also has an auto resolve to face up here in the top right of the map. Nothing special, thought might as well auto resolve that. The result was fine, probably wouldn't have been much better if we did that ourselves. There we go. Now we can take most of the men there and pull them back to join Hao Meng or Gao Shun as it is now at the big standoff. The Sao clan are now destroyed. The last of their troops at Wu Yin die of starvation because of the siege. We take the settlement and that will be the end of them. We also take Lin Zi from Qing Zhou because they run out of supplies. I had been intending to attack that place once those reinforcements arrived, but after that rebellion, we just waited the couple of turns necessary to finish them off for free. Again, as I always say, there's no rush up there because we don't have anything else to do apart from attacking Qing Zhou at this point. Had an interesting offer come in from Liang. This is the faction that controls the Emperor at the moment, so they're particularly influential. They're off to our west through the pass west of Luoyang, the Tong Pass, I think it's called. They want an alliance, I have to pay them for it, which was a little bit annoying, but overall I thought, yeah, an alliance might be good, because then we'll have allies in a big ring around us, apart from the north, where it's just the Yuan clan, and maybe we could focus on them to get the last territories we need for our victory condition. They rejected my deal after I threw in map information trading <laughs> to part of their own arrangement. They weren't up for that, so I thought, well, how about pretty much the same deal that you offered me. We'll keep our secrets on the map information, but no, they were too offended. So that didn't happen. Here's the news we were looking for. The Sao clan are officially gone. So Lu Bu's initial goal has now been fulfilled. We've taken down the treacherous Sao clan, but we haven't saved the emperor, which is what everyone's proclaimed goal is at this point. He's over there in Chang'an, which I can't reach with my spy. <laughs> I was trying to go over there to take a look, but there's another pass blocking any entry into Liang's territory. If we can get there, 
that would be how we take control of the empire. It means going to war with Liang. Maybe we should do that just to avenge the terrible diplomacy they did with us. But for now, we're not going to bother, and I'm actually going to take Zhang Liao's army out of the city and deploy it to deal with certain other very chaotic matters which will be arising in the next part. <laughs>